Heads up, this will be pretty much a negative gun review. We hate the Beretta Pico. There, you've been warned right at the beginning of the GRV. So if you own one and love it, you will not change our minds. <laughs> That's not going to happen. You may not want to watch this particular GRV. Thank you. Public service announcement for the project. Tactical Doodle, what do you think? I'm sure there's some guy just clenching his stress ball right now, holding his, his, his ball. teal Robin's Egg Blue <laughs> Lavender. first edition collectible with a threaded barrel or something. He's like, oh, come on. But, 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 not, you need to, but, 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 you gotta look at the price. But, 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 it's small. But, 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 it's thin. We hate this gun. Let me explain That's you what something. this GRV is about. We freaking hate it. One of the most awkward uh, driving encounters I ever had was with a friend's dad in high school. Who, when he saw the 350Z, started yeah. telling me all oh. about how much better his, I'm not kidding here, That's right. specially ordered, That's right. first edition Chrysler PT Cruiser right. in silver was. Now, I it did have that. the little, like, tur it was like 180 horse. He's like, oh, it'll waste that he was Z. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't even know why you'd waste your time with that. You know, I got on the wait list for the PT Cruiser, and it is, I mean, it'll just own that thing, hands down. It's faster, I'll be able to type. Hideous automobile. What? The PT Cruiser. Guy still has it to this day, though. Wow. Still takes well, care of it. Well, good for him. Still... I mean, he paid it off and he's running it into yeah, the ground. He's on the I other respect side of the that. Uh, so, if you think this is your PT Cruiser and you want to convince us of how awesome it is, it ain't going to happen. There we go. Would you buy that gun? I would not. Yeah, Do you there's hate that gun. There's just so many good options out there. Do you there's, hate it? Um. Don't lie to us. <laughs> I can't say that I really hate it. There, there's a couple of redeeming factors. The sights are really good on it, and it is very slim. So those are the redeeming factors. That That's about all good I can say about it, though. I mean, the trigger's horrible, really high bore axis, hard to hold on to. The trigger just is, is a killer, and then the mag release is awful. So I, I don't know. Two out of ten. Can't say that I quite hate it, but it's... I kind of hate it. Yeah. It's, I kind of hate it. It's pretty far down there. I hate it. Yeah. I wish they were like, though. Sorry. Um, you, you just get what we perceive as the truth, what, what we reveal in testing. That's what you're going to get right here. Uh, we almost took this to the bunker, but we figured for, for this tiny pistol, it's better to go tabletop. Yeah, TD. I'm trying to hold it in front of you the whole time. I say bonker because uh, we wanted you to see our facial expressions when we criticize certain aspects of the Beretta Pico. Yeah. There. There. I, I've ruined the whole GRV because usually I wait to the end. We wait to the end to say, hey, would we buy it or not? I don't, they don't need the suspense. It's more going to be a dissection of right. a failure now. They're, we're just going to build the case of why we hate it. Uh, the suspense is uh, ruined. We would never buy a Pico. We don't care how cheap it is. No way. First up, TD, I got to show you this before we dig into the details of why we hate the Beretta Pico 380. Have you seen this knife? So it went on a Wolverine X4 expedition with your mom and I. It was in a bag with an apple I forgot about and the apple rotted and the blade completely pitted and rusted. And I was like, oh, if you guys don't know what this is, it is, of course, an open L, one of the larger ones. Classic cheese knife. Very <laughs> it is. illegal Cla in most of Europe. Cla no, he's good. Classic food knife. I love the food aspect of this. And I was like, oh, crap, that's ruined. And then I started thinking, I was like, well, maybe not. I'll just de-rust the blade. So I put it on a burnishing wheel, yeah. took all the rust off, and look at how cool pitted it is now. Isn't that cool? And then I sharpened it on the Edge Pro Apex, link below. Oh, my goodness. It's cool now. And yes, it is oiled. And it, it was oiled when it was in that baggie, mm. by the way, with vegetable oil. And it didn't help. Didn't help. It's kind of cool, though, isn't it? Cheese knife. Uh, and then I lubricate it so it actually folds. It doesn't lock in the wood handle. I love open L knives, but they're kind of high maintenance sometimes. If you get them wet, you get them beat up, your dog, by the way, is chewed on this. Macy. There's Macy the Mountain Dog chewing on the open L. I love the knife, though. It's a deadly weapon, as classified by the United Kingdom. Yeah, there's more because of that coming down. it has a down. locking mechanism. No doubt. Uh, number, what does that say? Number 10 on this one? The yeah. big one? Yeah. Open L for really a GRV. Like it. The love it, though. It's kind of cool. Awesome. If you haven't grabbed one, buy it, and you find a lot of use for it. Uh, it's a great kitchen Like we're saying, too. that's what I'm saying. It's a yeah. perfect food knife. It slices so good. I just love open L's, and they come along all the time. And they're super lightweight, by the way, to carry. This is a triple CP watch. Uh, I forget the model number. 
I just got it from points at drop. So guys, we'll use my links at drop. That's cool. And I had enough points to get this watch for review. Stand by, you'll see it. I'll put the the name of it below. It's an automatic and it was like way inexpensive. Like it's like 99 bucks. Follow my Twitter account and I talk about these deals and they go away very quickly. On we go with the uh, gun review. We'll talk about some of this other stuff Man. maybe as the video goes on. Yeah, we hate it. Do we have to talk about it again? We have to review it. We have to see this thing through. We got to get back, get it back to our <laughs> friends at Handgun Haven, Adam. So thank you to you, Adam. Sorry guys. Thank you. Uh, oh. I wish it was awesome so we could you know, tell people to go and buy their, you know, Beretta Pico from you. And maybe someone completely disagrees with this review, and they go oh. buy one. Anyhow, I say more power oh. to you. Go to Hand, oh. Handgun Haven. It's in Salt Lake City. They're an associated gun store. Uh, they don't pay us. We don't pay them. Pure relationship. Uh, they're I the reason why I'm reviewing trigger. this. So and horrible. at the outset, I was completely unexcited to review this. Yeah. I, I pulled it out of the case, and I talked to Adam. I was like, I don't want to review this. That's how a lot of the better at us stuff is, though. I don't like the Nano, True. I don't like I the PX4. The, the ARX is about the most exciting thing they've come out with in a while, right. and that's like a 6 out of 10 for me. Yeah, so. I just reviewed the CX4, the Storm, that's good. It's a PCC 9mm. Nine, nine uh, it shot great, but here we go with the same company with a with a product we don't like, and that happens all the time. Summer One hits, more. summer fails. Um, I had it in hand, and I was like, oh my gosh. Safe no. I asked him too, how does this, this sell? And he goes, it doesn't. <laughs> Nobody buys it. Uh, one store data, but there you go. Philosophy of use, obviously a subcompact carry pistol. We do have some competitive options. It will add length to this, perhaps feature length GRV. Uh, it will be entertaining and hopefully uh, informative. Hopefully. Uh, yeah, something small you just carry. Uh, I don't use 380 as a primary carry caliber. I've told people forever not to do that, and yet I still see it. Yeah. Like, when we do gun checks, how often do we see 380s versus 9s? I think it's still technically the the highest for concealed. I wouldn't it? doubt it. It's prob probably very high 380s. And I'm talking, like, full-size dudes, not just small-statured individuals, uh, women. I'm talking across the board we see a lot of 380s. I think people are just, you know, they th it's easy to carry. They tuck it in a pocket holster like this. They put it in their pocket and off they go. Mm -hmm. Carry pistol. Uh... A recreational no we did not like shooting it absolutely not home defense i wouldn't do it a bug out gun no because i don't recommend it for that for several reasons um collectible no gift uh maybe to someone you don't like that yeah. much you could gift them a pico uh i don't really have much more to say with this i can't really think of a philosophy of use that i myself would put this in there's nothing it can do that Several other guns cannot beat it in, in every category. Absolutely true. Like a bug out? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could. It is Absolutely light true. and it's svelte. 11.6 ounces. Look at that. 0.7 inches overall width, so it's very slim. That's a good thing with the Pico. And yeah, we're going to say a couple good things about it. It's not all negative. It's rated technically for plus P380. That's cool. That's kind of cool, but it has a strong recoil spring and a double uh, recoil spring as well. Yeah, um... Okay, features, I guess. We, we started talking about it already. Uh, the sights, let's say something good. The sights are good. I like the sights. Um, kind of. So, they're visible, right? That's great for a pocket pistol, right? Uh, there have been reports, of the, though, that that front sight has flown off during shooting. Notice that the milling on it goes lengthwise on the slide as opposed to side to side. And there's a, I believe a set screw in there, isn't there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, so there's a set screw that holds it in, both That's for the rear fun. sight, and when that set screw comes off, you're going to lose your front sight. By the way, during testing over the last 14 and a half years, you and I have lost more than a few front sights, yeah. right? They have flown off, but apparently that is a minor consideration because what you should do is, uh, Tactical Doodle's favorite thing, walk tight every screw in the gun, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't get them started. So the sights are good. I mean, as far as the presentation, they're metal, they're good. Uh, I don't know if anything else swaps in them, but there, they're there. Uh, the slide, um, I don't like it. This is the first negative thing I'll say. I think it sits too high and I feel like I'm holding a broom handle on the bottom of a pistol with this gun. It just feels like the whole gun is way up here. Yep. For you too? The ergonomics it just, on it weird. baffle me. It's weird. It, it does not inhuman. sit low in hand. If you told me it was and like I'm a, a three-fingered tridactylic hominid yeah. that was because it's so skinny and small. Right. Yet the trigger breaks so far back. 
It's like a, t a Tyrannosaurus Rex. It's got that big head, yeah. the tiny little fingers. Uh, and some of this is optical illusion, I think. So, I, I mean, this isn't like pure science we're talking about. It's just the feel of the gun. The slide and the bore axis seem very high. The slide durations are, are horrific. So bad. They're so bad. I mean, you have like a quarter inch in height. There's none up here. So retracting uh, the slide is problematic. And again, it takes, I wouldn't say a fair amount of force, but something. Yeah. I, for that reason, I don't know if this is a good women's pistol going mm -hmm. back to POU. Okay, we don't like that. Uh, the slide stop, slide catch, whatever you want to call it, is recessed, you know, so it's slim and doesn't catch on anything. I know no one uses that to, uh, you know, drop the slide. It's a slingshot method. We've talked about that. I still hate it. I still hate it. We both hate it because it's basically unusable unless you really mm -hmm. dig in here. I'm going to demonstrate. So I'm going to retract the slide. The magazine is in. It's empty, of course. I'm going to try to disengage this the magazine release, which is another item. There we go. And then I want to drop this. Doable, yes. Is it awesome? No. You've got to really dig your thumb in. Do you find that to be the case, or, or am I exaggerating yeah. things? It would worry me giving this to someone I actually care about and now then <laughs> defend them. Just the idea that all the controls on it are hard to actuate. Yeah. Definitely not something you want to be stressed about, yet right. here they make the entire thing a lot tougher. Agree. Uh, the magazine release is ambidextrous. That's the good thing. It is European in nature, i.e. it's on both sides. It's not a push button. You can see it's a metal paddle that barely sticks out from the very slim polymer oh, frame. Top the doodle. Did you love it or hate no, it? I hate it. It's the same thing it HK so bad. does. They do a short stubby paddle so you don't have like any leverage. Just bring it out a little bit more. This is worse than H&K because I, I had a really hard time disengaging it. And maybe you can make the case, well, you know, you have gloves on. Well, I shoot pretty much every gun we test with gloves on, and it doesn't seem to be a factor. I can't even Like, get not at all. So I don't count that at all. And even with bare hands, it's all users are complaining top. about this mag catch. It's difficult to release, difficult to find. It's just horrific. And we're going to show you again in competitive options, guns that absolutely Welcome get it right. We hate the mag catch. The trigger is double action only, so this is not a tri striker-fired gun. It is a concealed hammer, internal hammer gun. How did you love the trigger? I hated it so much. Uh, it seems like it pulls at like 15 pounds. I measured it today. It's 8 to 9 pounds, which isn't that bad, but it seems so heavy. Right? It has, since it's double action only, it's a double action reset. So look, comes all the way up here if you care about reset. Um, I'm not a, as I've said before, I'm not a big reset guy. I don't really care. I think most people have a lot more things to worry about than where their trigger resets. Like, I don't know. Breath control and maintaining sight alignment would be more important. Uh, the trigger is metal. That's good. I just don't like how it breaks. Uh, the reset's not great. I don't like the trigger. And this is a more dated design. Like we said, we should have done this review a long, long time ago. Yeah. It's taken me this long to, I don't know, even think about reviewing this gun. But even when it came out, it had pretty good competition. Let's do a couple more. Yeah, it did. Uh, and two of those are on the table. We'll show you here in a second. Uh, now, here's another unforgivable feature. Uh, I'm going to let TD explain this. What about this slick slanted part and the slickness overall of the gun? Tell them. Boy, I sure do love it. I love having a slippery, snappy, recoil heavy, oddly squared off front end. Like, hey, let's make sure this is beveled. Let's not bevel this at all. It's yeah, angled. Yeah, you nothing to grip on. So as you shoot, if you're trying to really keep control over it, it's almost ramping itself up and away out of the hand. Yeah. Jumping out, just like a fish. It's very natural, yeah. kinesthetically. Yeah, it's... Uh, we hate the frame. Uh, there's no traction to speak of on the frame at all. Nothing. And, this is like not... Right. This is more like a paint scheme. It's, it's just a total miss. I don't know what they were mm. thinking, even way back then. And I say way back then, six-ish or so years ago, whenever it came out. Uh, it's just horrific. I don't know who signed off of it. It just is oddly proportioned. That's one thing. But then, like you said, having a tiny grip, higher slide, no traction, slanted trigger guard, it's a loss. Well, for so me. many other pistols understand that this size of a mag is not the ideal handle. Yet these it's guys went two, as thin as possible. Right. It's They're, a two-finger two finger grip. I don't Hold know. it right now and show them. So grasp with the Pico, and how many fingers can you get on that? Maybe one? One and a, one and a third. If, now, it comes with two magazines. Here they are, and they're both uh, six rounders, okay, six round magazines, which is standard for this style yeah. of pistol. 
and then you got a finger rest. The finger rest helps immensely, but it makes it a larger, yeah, larger yeah. carry. These are stainless steel mags. They worked fine. I don't have any issues with the mags. I think they're fine. They're standard. Yeah. So put that in and then show them the difference. I don't. The think finger rest is like almost these, mandatory though. to control the gun. They always advertise it with how shootable things are with the heels on, but when you ask someone in person, they never have it in the waistband. That right. Because look at how much bigger it is now. Yeah, did that's you how notice? Top heavy it is. Yeah, that, that's yeah. what I was gonna say. That just if you release it, it's so top heavy, it's gonna flip out of your hands, and there's no. It's slippery. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so the barrel quality, the quality throughout the Beretta uh, Pico is good. It's Beretta. You know, Beretta's a good company. They know how to put a gun together. I'm not saying the materials. Uh, the materials themselves are, are low quality. I think they're high quality. The, the matte finishing on the stainless slide, I'm okay with that. Uh, but it's the choice and how they decided to implement them. It's kind of like a Mazda. Right. How they, I like the stuff and I like the performance, but the design is... Just the on current Mazda's, I cannot wavelength. stomach. They are I so cannot, bad. I cannot freaking stomach. Look at the extractor on the side. That thing is massive. Look at that. It's just weird that it's like runs a whole length. This external extractor on the Pico. This is your field strip portion here. You'll need a little screwdriver to do that. And they did that so I guess you don't have levers on the side. I, I have an issue with that though. Because why? I mean, all these other guns that we absolutely love, and they're so war-proven here, yeah. they have little trim, low-profile takedown levers. It doesn't seem to be a problem with them. Some other 380s have like a cross pin, like the P3AT and the Kel um, uh, or the, like the P3AT and the LCP2. Yeah, I'd almost prefer that. But this is what you use to field strip it. Locked breech design, tilt barrel, just like the LCP. That's how it can be so small, so it's not just a blowback pistol uh, that's re that's features down and dirty um, not much good there really in fact I don't know if anything we said great about it the sights I guess the sights as far as how they look the rest was pretty much negative how did it shoot let's go back to recreational philosophy of use I give you 200 uh, rounds and I say hey go shoot it out of the bread or pico would you be excited I would shoot a couple rounds while pocketing as many as I possibly can and go, wow, that went fast. You'd distract me and go, hey, yeah. man, look at the baby deer. Dude, is that a bear? Where? It's Whoa, dude, you went through all those rounds that quick? Yeah, thanks. See you around. So we shot, I don't know, about 250 through this, something like that, uh, and it was not enjoyable for all the reasons we've been talking about. Bad trigger, slick grip, can't uh, curl your finger around the front of the trigger guard. I, I'm, it's hard it's to illustrate until you hand it to someone. They go, oh, I get it. Because you'd hold it and you think, okay, put the finger on it, but you don't, you don't have to let still pulling, still pulling, still yeah. pulling, still. There we go. There you go. Double but action. In order to do that, I have a void on the right. Mm -hmm. So you want to, well, I got to tame it. So next thing you know, you're, you're yeah. like that was closer to what I'd actually do just in order to keep yeah. it in hand. You got to pull, 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 pull. Oh, there it is. And yeah, whatever. Uh, reliability was excellent, actually. Do the action, so the I don't like Joe Grit. That's what it's meant dang, for. Old school Joe Grit. Yeah. And by the way, I think I said internal hammer. I should have said bobbed hammer, not internal hammer on the Beretta Pico. On the good side, it was reliable. I don't remember if any stop. I don't remember any stoppages in the Pico. I did have a bunch of desert footage, and it did not import correctly off the SD card, and I think it is lost. Sweet. So you might be looking at the table a lot in this video, yeah, so along with some other GRDs coming up. I'm not going out and shooting this thing again nah. and spending money on ammo. Ain't gonna happen. I don't think the people who own them oh, shoot them. So bad. My Hell guess no. is it's Hell people no. that went and noticed it comes in purple, teal, and whatever that other right. early color is, yeah. and they saw the price being sub two hundred dollars. Yeah. Thought, cool. I need something for right. my purse. Not for that. And it reload. sits there for. And it. maybe the salesperson. Oh sold them on it yeah. said, oh dude check this out it's small and it is small and to someone that does not know guns mm -hmm. they could hold no. it and go hey this is what i want and a, a lot of women are attracted to the small carry guns like this your mom's that way she likes the small guns mm -hmm. she carries a p32 all the time and i don't like it but that's what she likes she's like well it's tiny it's i easy. can hardly get her to carry that damn thing i know usually i'm pushing a glock 43 on her and that's work uh, so accuracy. Shh. Let's show you the paper here, the Beretta Pico. We did do indoor testing on it as well. This is a mag dump. By the way, this is not indoor testing. I don't know where that that paper went. Maybe I'll show you in inset. Oh, that's not horrible. Seven rounds.
standing. Uh, that's the grips you're going to get out of it, like being really, really, really careful. This is uh, in May. I shot this operation in the desert. That's what you can expect out of your Bre uh, Beretta Pico. And maybe you that's a really good grip, actually. And maybe you go, wow, that's not bad at all. It's a pocket pistol. Yeah. You should expect as much. Um, I hear what you're saying, but now we go into competitive options, and we're going to give you some evidence that it does not have to be that way. Witness, ladies and gentlemen of the project, of course, the Ruger LCP2, our top choice for 380 carry pistol, yeah. still to this day. Still to this day. Super lightweight, compact, has a lock, locked breech design just like this gun, and yet it doesn't have any of the weirdness mm -mm. of the Breda Pico. Let's count it off. Great grip. Mm -hmm. Normal mag release that's yep. easy to find and actuate, and yet it's not so prominent you'll accidentally release it. Yep. Fantastic trigger. Yep. Serrated front trigger guard. Mm -hmm. They get it. It's not squared off. I wish it was. I said that in the review, but it it's good enough. Mouse. You can work it. Comes in these wicked colors. Look at this. This is a distributor special edition. I bought this from Handgun Haven, by the way, this tan one. Super cool. Look at this. Slide serrations that are actually working. Front and rear. Awesome. Great sights. Granted, I need to paint these, but they're low profile. And they were regulated well, too, in this particular pistol. That's awesome. You get the option of a seven-round magazine. Like that. So you have a seven-round magazine with extended uh, finger rest. And by the way, it has that awesome stippling continued on the bumper yeah, pad. That matches the pattern, too. Yeah. Unlike, so I, this is kind of yeah. afterthought-ish. Right. By the way, that's Tactical Doodle's paint filling that he does on a lot of our pistols. Yeah. And I bet you if I leave this hang laying around long enough, he's going to fill this LCP2. Do it in black, by the way. I think black would look cool on that. All right. Black against uh, the FD. So the LCP2 is reliable, su superior accuracy. Uh, you're looking at, at seven yards, inch groups with careful yeah. shooting. It's totally capable, 100% reliability. It dominates this gun, absolutely. Yeah, I, is it more expensive? Sure, but dude, you spend money in life, okay? And I've always told people, buy something that really makes you happy on a first and second cool level. I mean, I don't get when someone buys such an important thing as a firearm and they chintz out on it. Do you get that? No, it's a sad thing when you're stuck with a gun that no one else wants it. either. Yeah, try to sell it. How much yeah. resell will a Breda Pico have? 60 bucks, maybe? You're like, well, I guess Go I'll to a gun my store. car unlocked and leave it in the glove box. Right. How about the Caltech P3 AT? This is an earlier version coming out of the Urban Survival Kit, the USK. We still have it. Even that's better. Even that's better. Good, good traction, good magazine release. It's a double action only as well, so it shares the same feature. Locked breech, super cool colors. It's reliable, it's accurate. Snappier than the LCP2. Yeah. Harder to shoot than LCP2. Mostly reliable. Too. It's got none it's of that, awesome. that Italian flamboyance. It's. It's a great gun. The P3AT, and it has been generationally improved through the years. Yeah. Great. I mean, I still have it in a USK. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't be there if it sucked. I would pull it out, and it's super, super light. It's lighter than the Pico. Nine ounces, a <laughs> Keltec awesome. P3AT. So this is a win. Uh, what else do we have? Keltec P32. Mrs. Nut and Fancy's choice frequently, as I lamented. I know. It's just like this one. It's just like a P3AT. It's just in a 32 ACP. The P3AT is only slightly bigger, slightly heavier. They're basically the same gun. This thing weighs like half an ounce. That's how light it is. One half ounce tactical doodle. I love how similar they are. Although, yeah. according to a certain quartermaster, this goes through a glass like a. What does he say? Goes Who? When remember when Bond gets the 380 and he moves up <laughs> yeah. from the, the talking about a James Bond reference, and he's like, it goes through like a brick through a plate glass window. <laughs> yeah. The overhyping of the yeah. 380 ACP in the 1960s, pretty do, funny. Can you believe that's you what guys would do? Should make a whole video on that. Hey, buddy, you're going off to war. Here's a 32. <laughs> what? Well, it fits in the pocket. It's better than a 22. Yeah, definitely. And I think I'm running silver tips in this one. Honestly, if you yeah. had good good ammo with it, I would be afraid of it. I don't want to get shot I'd be, by a I don't get why people act like, like 380 is scary enough, man. Here's an LCP2 and 22 long rifle. Tabletop coming one of these days. Isn't it kind of interesting how they added the little wings in the back? It seems like I'm True. seeing those everywhere lately. Yeah, that comes from the VP9, I yeah. think. They were the first, well, maybe one of the... Maybe one of the first ones to do it. They probably ripped him off a brass stacker. Yeah, brass stacker had the, yeah, as you the, say, the cock rings. Yeah. 
Yeah, the caulking rings. Did I say that right? That's the caulking loop. I don't think I'll ever find cock rings that fit. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, this is a 22. It's basically the same pistol here. And I think that's all we have for competitive options. Because again, in our systems, we're not super huge into 380. It's like a niche pistol. Right? I only take it out whenever I'm sure I'm not getting in a gunfight. And even then, I probably have more firepower in my vehicle. Now, you're, you're listening to someone that is Tactical Doodle here to my right that carries a wall through PPK in 380. Yeah. But it's a longer barrel, a little bit more velocity. And as you just noted, you're doing it more of a second cool thing. Yeah. I had a dress up occasion a while back. PPK on me, but the Glock 34 with a couple mags in my bag. And it made you happy. Yeah, I'm not going around in this climate these days with just a PPK. Agree. And the climate we're talking about is communist rioting going on. Uh, really kind of pushing uh, the limits of rule of law in a lot of cities, true yeah. or false. It's a weird time. Man. Yeah, it's a weird time. And if uh, Trump is not elected, it's going to get a lot, a lot worse. These, uh, worse, these GRVs could go away. Pico! De Gallo! Very difficult. There we go. I will say it's better on steel than on paper. <laughs> Long. That was a long shot with that little guy. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> with that trigger, that's rough. <laughs> Two more and we're done with this. GoPro, stop recording. Honestly, I'm sure someone out there is going, yeah, but it's so cheap. I mm -hmm. could get it for right. 140 street. Still not worth it. Mm -mm. I hate to crack your bubble, but dude, no. Splurt. The difference in price is not that much when you have a gun because you keep it forever. You don't wear it out. You don't throw it away. You shouldn't be giving it away. Right. So you buy it once, buy it right, keep it around. That's what I was saying about the LCP2. So much for the money with the Rugers these days. Yeah. They're so much better than the first gen LCPs. Mm -hmm. that, oh, I don't know awesome. how they can improve this. Unless they somehow magically fit 10 rounds of 380 in the same yeah. space. <laughs> you know, like a double stack LCP that's only like a half inch wider. Yeah. That would be sick. Uh, the LCP2 is amazing. Uh, is there any competitive option that we've talked about, discussed, or shown on the table that you would not prefer over the Pico? Mm -hmm. Every single one of them would be preferred by us. Pico, uh, by us, I'm sorry, is a non-recommend. We don't care if it's inexpensive. Yeah. Uh, we don't care. Save up some more bucks, get something nice. Uh, reliable? Yes, we're saying it's reliable, but yeah. everything else is not good. Uh, do we need to talk about it all over again? No. no. I'm sure there'll be a version two. They'll probably notice yeah. it's flagging in sales. If, but that's Maybe. the weird thing about Beretta, because they don't seem to track trends like the rest. Yeah. I make fun of Ruger sometimes for it, but at least they have an eye on the market. And they go, right. that's they cool. Do. We're doing that. Put that out. Get that out there. Right. Beretta's, I assume, just some They're behind. artsy man with a They're paintbrush. They're behind. And he, I would they make don't a innovate. small pistol. And he, Here, here's what Beretta needs to do. They need to take this gun, yep. blueprint it, and make their own version. In other, in other words, yeah. Ruger, Ruger. Do what Ruger does to everybody yeah. else. Because Ruger copied the P3AT initially. That's where the LCP came from initially, and then they improved on their own design. Yeah. Hey, Beretta, Ruger, Ruger. Oh. 
<laughs> do what Ruger yeah. does to everybody else. Just make your own version with some slight changes of the LCP2, and then we'll review it, and I bet you we love it. That fancy project. I can't even pull that Thanks for being part so of the horrible. donation is... family here in the Night Fancy Project. That is why we work so hard for you. Join below. Click, subscribe, stay tuned. A lot more GRVs coming some week.